In this video, we will be starting to implement our ASTAR algorithm into the game. So if you understood the last video, then it should be very easy for you to follow along and implement it. So if you had a hard time understanding what I did in the last video or understanding what I was explaining in the last video, then don't worry because I will also explain those main points throughout this video so that you'll understand what we implement and why we implement it and so on. Because I will try to divide the implementation into a lot of steps so it's easier for you to take a break and test if something works or if it doesn't work so you know where you went wrong and what you uh, so you know where you need to bug fix something to make it work so i would really encourage you to test everything throughout the tutorial every time we add something please test it out to see if it works um, and if it doesn't work then you can write a comment and ask me what the problem could be because it's easier for me to help you out um, if you test it all the time instead of you just running through five videos and then asking why doesn't this thing work because then we did so many things so it's harder to localize the problem right so um but uh, don't worry i don't think it's going to be hard to implement this because we just ran through the theory and we will just implement stuff right away so don't get get discouraged and think that this sounds very very hard because i'm asking you to test everything all the time because i will also be testing stuff throughout the tutorial because i can't just write a full a star and then click play and then it works of course i would also have to test things to see if they work so we find all the neighbors we test if it works we try to find a score the neighbors we test if it works and so on right so every time I test, I think you should also run a test to see if it works. Besides the actual A star algorithm, we will also be adding a debugging class. And the debugging class will make it easier for us to test and see if stuff works. And um, the debugging class will simply help us color the tiles so we can see which are neighbors, which are on the open list, which are on the closed list and so on. Uh, just to make it easier to see if something should be wrong in our pathfinding. Um, so the a debugging class is not a part of the game. It's simply something we create to make it easier for us to understand what's happening. Um, what else? Also, in the final game, we will just generate a path from start to finish. And then the monsters will be given that path. And when they have the path, they just walk, walk from start to finish. When we create the algorithm to test if it works, we will just be creating a path from two tiles we click on. So we click on one tile from our start point and click on other tile which is our end and then we find a path between those two points so it's easier for us to bug test okay so that is the intro and let's get started implementing this So first of all, we need to create a couple of classes. If you remember from um, the previous video, uh, we had to divide our grid into nodes, right? So if I play the game, we have a lot of uh, tiles here. And on each of every one of these tiles, we will have to create a node so that we can go towards it and, and use it for the algorithm to calculate where to go. So we need to create a new class called node. So go to your um, what's called script folder and you can just right click and create a new folder and called A star. So let's just separate the A star classes from the rest. It makes it easier. Open that new folder and right click create and create a um, script called a node. So this is going to be our node script. If we open that one up, let's see if I can make it a little larger here so it's easier to see. Go and open up the error list. Um, then we need to open the node class here. So our node class needs some different things, but we will build it up slowly. So we will not add everything now. We will add stuff when we need it to make it easier for you to understand when we add it and why we add it instead of just writing a whole class and then it works, right? So that's how I usually do. First of all, when we have this node class, we need a grid position. So make a property called point and write it grid position and remember the grid position is x and y coordinates right so our um, top tile here will be 0, 0.0 this one will be um, 1.0 this one will be 2.0 and so on right 
So that's why we need this grid position, so we know what tile we are talking about, so that our um, monsters can get those uh, paths it needs to walk to 2.2 and so on, and also to make it easier for our algorithm to figure out what tile it needs to work with. So that's why we need that thing on, on the actual um, node here. Another thing, our node doesn't need to inherit from Mona behavior because our node isn't something that we need to attach to a script or to a game object in the game. So remove Mona behavior and delete start and update. Okay, so now we just have a grid position, but we haven't set it yet. So let's create a constructor for our node so that we can set the grid position. And besides the grid position, we'll also need a um, tile script because every single uh, node is sitting on a tile and for convenience we would like the node to have a reference to the tile it's sitting on um, so as i said every single node here will have every single tile i mean uh, will have a node on it and that node will need as reference to this tile script here just to make it easier for us to work with the algorithm and you'll see later why anyway we can call this one tile ref so now we have a grid position and a tile ref then we need to create a node and the reason that we create this public node is because it's called uh, this is actually a constructor because i think we already <coughs> sorry looked at this earlier but when we create a class normally in c sharp and we call a function without a return type the same name as a class then it's a constructor which is called every time we create a node so every time we create a node we would like to create a reference to the tile script that the node is sitting on. So we can actually just say tile script dot tile script yeah, ref. Let's call that tile ref. There we go. So we need to set this tile script here equal to this tile ref here. So we can say this dot tile ref equals tile ref. So now it's very important that you set this tile ref up here with capital T equals to the tile ref, ref with non capital T, right? So this one is equal to this one, not this one equal to this one, right? So make sure you write this correctly, else you're going to have some problems. Um, what else do we need to have it as a private set? I'm actually not sure if I would want it to private. I think I would. Yeah, let's say private set here. There we go. So you can't set it from outside because there's no point in setting the tile script from another class. That's why we're just setting it in the constructor. So that is actually what we need to do for now in the node class. Um, so now we have a node class we can add. We still haven't added it. So let's go back to Unity and go to the actual um, folder here. Right click, click create and create a new C sharp script and call it a star. So this is our A star class, and this is the class that is going to do our pathfinding. First of all, we only need this. We need to be able to access this class from other places. So you can just simply delete start and update, and delete the inheritance from our mono behavior because it doesn't need to sit anywhere uh, in our game uh, in our game objects. It also needs to be used from somewhere else. So to make it easier for us to use this from other classes we will simply say public static class. So now our A star class is actually a static class, which means that we can use everything in it um, that is public from uh, other classes on the class level. Um, it's a, what should I say? It's, it's not the same as a singleton because this is just a static class. We don't have an object and anything, but it will make it easier for us to use it uh, everywhere else when it's static and when something is static it needs to have everything static in it all, all um, functions and everything needs to be static in it anyway uh, what do we need to create first of all we need to create a dictionary of nodes in it so we need to create all the nodes for all our tiles right and the reason that I'm using a dictionary instead of a list is because a dictionary is faster in this case than a list I tested it with list and with no uh, with a dictionary and uh, the benchmark always came out that the dictionary was faster all the time uh, except if it was only two tiles we needed to move or something so we can make a private private static 
dictionary. And if you can't find dictionary, right click on it, quick actions, implement system, the collections are generics. And it needs to, to have a point key and a note as value. And I'm not explaining a dictionary now because I think I explained it earlier when we were creating our notes and our tiles. Okay, so let's create a new function. We need a function to create our notes. So let's make a private static void uh, called create notes. So this function will uh, create a note for each tile in the game. So let's first of all instantiate our notes. Right now this one is null, it haven't been set. We need to set it by saying node equals new dictionary. There we go. So now we have instantiated, we asked for some place in the memory and we can actually use this dictionary for something now. So let's add some nodes to it. First of all, we need to make it for each loop. And this loop needs to run some tile scripts through. So each tile in our level manager that instance the tiles that values. So on our level manager, we go through the singleton instance, we find the tile um, dictionary and we run through all the values which are the tile scripts. So we run through all the tile scripts we have in the game, which is each, each tile we have in our game right now. Every time we find a tile, we need to create a new node. So we can say node, um, let's see here, sorry, I call this one node. I would actually like to call it notes with an S because that makes more sense because there are more nodes in the dictionary. And that was a mistake, I wrote node. So notes with an S dot add. What would we like to add? Well, it asks for a key. So the point is actually our tile. Apparently I'm very bad at spelling today. It should also be tile here, not, not till. So tile dot grip position. Because um, as you can see, the key it wants is a point, right? And the grid position is a point. So tile dot grid position. And then we need a, new, a node. We can make a new node. And what does the node want when we create it? Well, it wants a reference to a tile script. Because when we created the node before, we said that our constructor needs a tile script as a reference so that we can set this tile script here. Okay. So if we go back to A star, we'll see that the constructor is called when we say new node. And then we just give it the tile. There we go. So now this function here will create a um, tile script for each and every, uh, not tile script, sorry. It will create a node for each and every one of the tile scripts. And other thing we need to do is back here in the node, we'll see we have a grid position, but we haven't set it yet. We haven't done anything to set it. So we need to say this dot grid position equals tile ref dot grid position so that we set the grid position of the node. And for now, let's make the grid position private because I don't think that we will have to set it from outside. We can always make it public later. So now we have set our grid position and our tile, tile ref. I am going to end this video here. In the next video, we'll be adding start and goal to the game. And we'll also be adding a debugging class so that we can see the colors on the tiles in the game. Uh, and the first thing we'll be doing is to color the start red and the goal green, for example, so that we can see the, the actual where the actual path needs to go from and to. So thank you very much for watching. And remember to follow me on Twitter, like my Facebook page, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it already. Also, don't forget that Inscope Studios is a community found page, so all your support is very important to me. You can support me by going to the Patreon page in the top of the uh, screen right here, where you can uh, get all my projects that I've ever created for YouTube. Or you can go to the bottom link and get one of my projects as a standalone product. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching.